Hey everybody, welcome back to The Connection. So good to have you with us today. Excited to see what the Lord has in store for us. Um, I was reading my Bible the other day and I came across a chapter, of course, like I've read it many, many times, but there was just something about it that really, really stood out to me. And and I got to do more research on it, more studying on it, and, and it, I think it's fascinating. And I, I want to share it with you. Psalms chapter 20, um, I want to begin reading at verse 1. Like I said, when, when I, I've read this chapter many, many times before because I've read my Bible through many times. And, you know, and but you know, that's that's what's so exciting about living for God is that his word is revelatory in nature. I mean, there's times you can read a scripture, you can, may have read it 15 times, but all of a sudden God just decides to reveal something about it that's just like, wow, you know, and this is one of these wow moments that I've had here with the word of God. And and I just had to share it with you because I know there's a lot of you right now that are most likely going through a battle, that you're facing something that's just traumatic or or just disheartening, discouraging, whatever it may be that you're going through. And I think this is going to be a blessing to you. Psalms chapter 20, let's begin reading at verse 1. And, and I want you to listen to how it, how the writer, of course the writer is David, and I want you to listen to how he puts this together. And we're not going to read the whole chapter. Of course, we could because it, it is all tied together. And, you know, we might before it's over with. It just depends how the Spirit of the Lord leads us here. But listen to verse 1. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up banners, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. That's verses one through five. And we're going to stop there right now for just a second. But I thought this was fascinating. Um, you know, um, when you do the research on this and you find out that a lot of commentators believe that this song that David has wrote is on the eve of a battle, a battle that's coming up. It's, it's, it's the not before. And, you know, in, in a lot of cases back in the Bible, whenever they would have a war or would be going to war or something like that, there would be a tremendous gathering together at the temple. Of course, the people would pray and they would pray for success and for God's hand to be upon them as they went into battle. And, you know, I just find that interesting because a lot of times, you know, we suffer with our individual battles. We go through them on our, I say suffer because a lot of times we go through battles on our own that nobody even knows about. That maybe if somebody knew, if we felt comfortable sharing it, that they could help us pray. But this, this was, this battle that they were going to go through was going to affect the nation as a whole. And so, uh, if you go to Second Samuel chapter ten, um, the story kind of unfolds there, where one of David's allies, his name is Nahash, king of Ammon. Uh, the Bible says he dies, and his son Hanan becomes the new king. Well, David sends a group of men, uh, almost like if you were looking at today's society, like the uh, Secretary of State, some of the high officials of the kingdom to go and offer his condolences to Hanan because of his father's passing. Well, Hanan is not surrounded by the most wisest of people. I've read a, a statement today that said, God gives us all patience and only the wise use it. So that's, that's very true. Uh, so these men that were around Hanan were not the wisest of men. And so they immediately told the king, they said, well, these advisors are coming here just to spy out because David's going to attack. And so Hanan does something that is very, very offensive. Um, the Bible said these men that David sends, he cuts half their beard off. So you got half of their face that their beard is cut off and it's shaven. And the Bible said they cut off their garments, you know, level with their backside and send them away. I mean, this is humiliating. 
I mean, as a matter of fact, it was a it was a declaration of war. David, David, as a matter of fact, the men went to Jericho, and the Bible said David went out to meet them there and told them to stay in Jericho until their beard had grown back, because these people had absolutely humiliated David's men, and therefore humiliating David at the same time. And uh, so I thought that was so fascinating. One of the beautiful parts about that story is, is that God will meet you where you are. That if you feel embarrassed, humiliated, if your life is gone in a bad direction and you don't know how to get it back on track, we have a king that will meet you where you are. And I thank the Lord for that because a lot of times, you know, in, in our weaknesses and frailty and in all the circumstances that surround what we're going through, we do, we just don't have the power to break through into prayer. We don't have the, the, the fortitude or maybe we have the desire, but not the, you know, the perseverance to push through in prayer. So I thank the Lord that he meets us in our time of need right where we are. And so they know that they, the Bible says, and they knew that they stunk in the, in the uh, eyes of David, they knew that, hey, we have just done something that is fixing to really, really bring some trouble on us. And so they go to war against Israel. Now, the Ammonites hire out, the Bible said, the Syrians. Of course, the Syrians were always ready to to go to war with, with Israel. So the Ammonites hired them out. And so this is the eve of the battle. And this is the song, Psalms chapter 20, that David sings or recites in front of the congregation that is gathered at the tabernacle to pray for the battle. And so, and I thought, man, this is so interesting because like I said, I've read this before, but really never put it together, really never, you know, had the revelation of what God wanted me to see here is that, you know, maybe this should be a, a prayer that we ought to pray on the eve of every battle. Maybe there's some of us right now that, you know, you're in the middle of a battle. Maybe you right today is the day that you pray this prayer and say, may the Lord answer me in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend me. May he send me help from the sanctuary. I'm telling you, heaven's going to come to your rescue and strengthen me out of Zion. May he remember all my offerings and accept my burnt sacrifices. See, that's what they would do. They would gather in the temple. They'd begin to offer, the king would offer sacrifice because the king would stand by the altar. That's where his usual position was. And they would offer up sacrifices to the Lord. And then he says, may the Lord grant you your heart's desire. And what is our heart's desire? We, we want to, we want to win. We want, to, we want to beat this thing that's fighting against us. We want to destroy the enemy that is trying to destroy our life. And he said, and may he fulfill all your purpose. I'm going to tell you something. These, these wars that we go through, these battles that we face, there is a purpose behind every one of those. And as we go into war, we need to understand that we've got a God that is on our side. And this is what they're praying. They're praying for the salvation of God. And, and, and he says, and we will rejoice he says, in your salvation, talking about God's deliverance, we will rejoice in that. And in the name of God, we will set up our banners. A lot of times in ancient warfare, they would they would set up banners of basically flags that, you know, with the with their emblem or whatever on there, just like we go into war today, we fly the American flag. They would set up their banners. And uh, and so, you know, the, the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. That standard was like the, the flag or the banner up over the enemy saying, hey, you may be coming against us like a flood, but I want to remind you, this is the army of the Lord. I want to remind you, and some of you have to do the same thing today. When the enemy's coming after you and coming in and rushing in on your life, you remind them, I'm a child of God, and I cannot be defeated if I put my trust in the Lord. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. And though so now... In verse 6, the song switches a little bit, and he said, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed, and he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. That is the power of God. And then they go on to say, verse 7, Some trust in horses, horses and some trust in chariots. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. For they have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the king, talking about the king of kings, answer us when we call. I'm going to tell you something. When you're going in this battle today, put your trust in God. Put your trust. God is here to save you. That's what he does. He delivers us. You know, I, I, I have seen people sometimes, you know, question, God, are you going to come through? Are you going to do this? I'm going to tell you, he will come through every time. It may not be in the manner you are expecting, 
but God always brings deliverance and he comes through every time. And this is what happens. The enemy falls and the enemy bows down because they see the power of God that is on your side, but you will rise up and you will stand upright because your trust is not in chariots. Your trust is not in horses. You're not putting your trust in the things of this world. Your trust is in God. And when you put your trust in God, I'm telling you, you are going to come out victorious. So I thought I want to share. I was so excited to share this with you today because I was like, man, I need a song, you know, you know, and maybe you need a war song today. Maybe you need a war song that you can just sing. And I'm not talking about Sweet Home Alabama either. And it's man. Let me tell you something. I told somebody here a while back, I said, you can't sing that song unless you're from Alabama. So I'm talking about a real war cry that you can sing and the heavens will hear and the enemy will hear and they will know that you're coming against the enemy and you're going into the battle with the spirit and power of God on your side. And God's heard your prayer. He's heard your petitions. He has accepted your sacrifice and he is going to deliver. And I love what Joab says in this battle. He says to his brother, Joab sets part of the army against the Ammonites, and he sets his brother Abishai against the Syrians. And he says, if the Ammonites, if the Syrians are too hard for you, he said, then I will come help you. If the Ammonites get too tough for me, he said, I want you to come help me. In other words, he said, we're in this battle together. And you know, the Bible says after the victory was won, I mean, it was a tremendous, tremendous victory that David won, all because Hanan, the king of Ammon listened to some very unwise people, but yet God gave them the, a tremendous, tremendous victory. And the Bible said the Syrians did not join themselves with Ammon anymore. They're like, you know what? You guys are trouble. We got beat too bad. Forget you. But David then come out of this battle with absolute victory. And I know today that God has the same purpose in mind for you. And I want you to remember this. Keep keep this scripture in mind. Psalms chapter 20 is the chapter. But keep the scripture in mind. Verse 4, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. I want to tell you something. You were born with purpose and God's got a plan. And God's going to fulfill what your heart's desire is. And I believe today that relief is coming from this battle. That victory is coming in this battle today. That you're going to walk out of this battle with tremendous victory in your life knowing that God has heard your prayer and that God is always ready to save his anointed. Let's pray together. Father, we love you today. Lord, and I thank you for bringing this word into my life. I thank you, Lord, that I have the opportunity to share this word today. That, Lord, there are many right now that are in a battle, whether it's with their finances, whether it's a situation in their home, whether it's a situation on their job, or maybe it's a spiritual battle, God. Nonetheless, whatever the battle is that they're dealing with today and whatever battles they're dealing with in their mind, God, let them know that you have heard their prayer and that you will give them their heart's desire and that, Lord, you will bring this battle to an end and you will give them the victory, God, no matter how overwhelming it seems. There's nothing greater than you, Lord, and I praise you for being on our side and giving us the strength and the power to fight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So sing this song today. Make your own tune out. Do like my wife does. She just starts singing, humming something. And just has a wonderful time singing and going around the house, just humming things. And, and sometimes I don't know what she's singing, but she's singing something good. So put a tune to this song, sing it, rejoice in it, knowing that God is going to give you the victory today. Amen. We love you. Remember us here at Foothills Worship Center family. Please pray for us. We're believing for tremendous revival in our life. If you want to give to us, you can go on our Facebook and you can find ways that you can give to the church and give to the ministry. We love you. We appreciate you. Share this with somebody that you know today is going through a battle. Let them know that God is on their side. God bless y'all.